didn't make it. Didn't make it. We are the Bryan family. We live off the grid in a remote community in northwestern BC on the border with the Yukon and Alaska. During the week, we operate a wood-fired organic coffee roastery and on our weekends and any minutes we can get off, you'll find us exploring the remote backcountry. We share those adventures with you here on our YouTube channel. This is part one of a two-part documentary that will follow us from our home in northern BC on a snowmobile expedition that's going to take us all the way to Dawson City in the central Yukon. We'll be using lakes, rivers, historic routes, historic trails. We are going to encounter overflow, trail cutting, some pretty crazy situations, and it turns into a test of our mental strength as a family. Today is an exciting day. It's our last time packing and we're putting everything in our toboggans to get ready and leave on this trip that we've been so anxious to get started. While the preparations for this trip have started weeks ago by plotting a course on maps, keeping on top of weather forecast, going over our equipment and making improvements where needed, today is an exciting day as we can finally put all our gear into the toboggans and set off on this anticipated journey. Our house is a busy mess trying to get ready for probably 10 days to two weeks worth of backcountry travel. We have all of our clothes and all of our food and everything out on display right now as we're packing and getting it all ready for this trip. Just in load is toboggan. Tent canvas, the tent stove, and some metal sheet there. I'm not taking those extreme pants after all, because uh, I checked the weather forecast before going, and uh, it's supposed to be a bit of a cold snap, and not anymore. And uh, I got other stuff just in case it's cold. So that was big hesitation anyway. Scooby Mobile is ready. And I guess here that's it. Yeah. Oh yeah, and I have the the meat as well. A stash of sausages and stuff like that. Taking up. Oh. You ready? Almost. Oh, Italian sausages, home blend sausages, breakfast, and what are that? Dog food! Ah, oh, that's good idea. Okay, frozen meat, then we're good. Getting ready to leave includes emptying out the water tank. That's just what I'm doing. Gonna lower that into there. Plug her in. We want to leave the least water possible in the tank because we don't want a big sheet of ice to form. Because remember, we're off the grid and we're going to let our house freeze up. So once this pump's empty now, I can start putting antifreeze in the water lines. Well, some pump emptied out the tank and we put the antifreeze in the water lines. The house is ready for freeze down. Some more mirror said minus 20. Nippy up there. It's not the first time for us to do such a trip. When we first met, we did a similar trip on snowshoes from home to Carmax. That took us 21 days, whereas this time by snowmobile, it will, or it should, take less time to get there. Philippe has also done this journey with the dog team all the way to Dawson City. So we have somewhat of an idea of what we are getting ourselves into, but conditions always change. And while we know this very well, we are definitely going to find out just how much this is true during this trip. Are you ready to go? Yeah! Dawson City! The first historic trail we are using is the Mail Run Trail. 
This trail was used during the gold rush to deliver mail between the communities of Atlan, BC and Carcross, Yukon by dog sled. From 1975 to 2005, commemorative mail runs were held by dog sled. In order to organize these commemorative mail runs, Bill Thompson, the organizer, was sworn in as a mail carrier. This way, during these commemorative mail runs, dog mushers could each carry a bag of stamped mail that they would deliver at the post office upon their arrival in the community. The first commemorative mail run, 14 teams took part. Some teams got lost and some had to turn around, but when they came to Moose Arm on Tagish Lake, there was a trapline trail put in to Atlan Lake, which is the trail that we are about to take also. First stage, we have crossed the lake from started this morning, crossed the lake. And uh, things were pretty good. It was a ferocious, cold wind. Uh, very cold ride, right? but uh, thanks to the wind, there is a nice crust on the lake, so a very little overflow. We had a, a few, uh, few time overflow, but nothing bad enough. And now the next good news is uh, the, the Mail Run uh, Trail has been uh, opened already by someone else uh, from the Carcross side. So that's good news for us. We're going to gain a lot of time. We're at a rough start with Scooby Mobile and Scooby, I want to bump uh, blew up. <laughs> yeah, Scooby Mobile. Uh, the, the tub separated from the frame this morning with all the, the bumps on the leg. So. Fixing here, and then tonight we're going to fix that up better if we can. There we go. It's Leandra popping in from the future. 80% of the people that watch our videos are not subscribed. So if you've been enjoying this video, please subscribe to our channel. You can always unsubscribe later. Thanks so much for following along. Now let's get back to the video. Once arrived in Carcross, we fuel up and catch up with the historic White Pass Railway. Look at the train rail hanging in the void there. The trestles are completely gone. Around the bend, we come upon a perfect spot to put up camp. We've done 100 kilometers today, so why not stop and set up camp right here? Setting up camp takes us about two hours from the moment we stop the snowmobile until we can have dinner inside, warm and cozy. We start with setting up the tent, installing the stove, installing the beds, the table, and once that's kind of put together, it's time to go cut some firewood. Firewood time. Now dry scudding. Really nice and 
Oh, that's gonna be a lot. Yeah, Justin. Yes. In uh, my toboggan, there is a cardboard box. There's two cardboard box: one with uh, fluids for machines, and one with meat. Meat? Yeah, meat. Okay. Get get a uh, get uh, you know package of sausages. Mm. What, what did you uh, cut? Sausage sack. Oh yeah. Coming sweet. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm. I'm probably gonna like it. Mm, it's getting cozy in there. Huh? Oh yeah. Kubi is taking care of himself. That's good. Let's go. Justin is taking care of himself. And us, we're gonna take care of the Scooby Mobile that uh, like broke down today. We went on a trip last week uh, uh, on, the, on the track, was extremely bumpy. And you must have broke the some bolts. There we go. Scooby Mobile! Alright. Due to heavy bumps, the bolts that were holding the frame and the fiberglass together were actually ate away at the fiberglass. And so the fiberglass cab that Scooby is in came completely off earlier today. So uh, right now we're just assessing how we can fix it as there's not much else to grab and we only have limited tools with us. But we have to find a solution because this is day one and we have a long ways left to go. Fixing the Scooby Mobile. After separating the fiberglass cab from the frame, we use our tools yeah. to drill, re-drill holes through the wooden piece of plywood that's in the bottom of the Scooby Mobile. And our goal is to have bolts long enough that can then reattach the tub to the frame. While we don't have all the bolts needed, we make do with the bolts that we do have, some nails and rope, and hope for the best. Good job, man. Good job, lady. 10.35, and we're done with the Scooby Mobile. Okay, much. let's put the strap back though. So. Minus 31 now. Minus 31 or 32. Oh, it's gonna be a cold day. Minus thirty one. Minus thirty one. Yeah. I bet you we're gonna you're gonna <laughs> even be a few more or less degrees. Yeah, before the sun comes up. Yeah, before the sun comes up. <laughs>
it's a frosty morning but we're ready for another good day it's a crisp minus 31 this morning and as much as the scenery is amazing it's hard to take our hands out of our gloves to film but we managed to take a few shots morning that's Lewis Lake here that we just went by so far so good on the trails awesome we get to Cowley Lakes at the point in the morning where the Sun is starting to warm up things so we decide to take a snack in this beautiful spot just before we get to Whitehorse We're on Whitehorse, the trails are well marked. We catch up with the Trans Canada Trail that's quite bumpy. The trail network avoids the, main, the downtown area of Whitehorse, which is great. Then we end up on the Tikini River. The Tikini River, we do about 70 kilometers, and it seems like the suburbs around Wildhorse have been expanding over the years. We don't remember there being so many houses and it's hard to find a place to camp. We end up doing a big day today and to try to make it off the river and kind of out of civilization. It's late when we find a spot somewhere in a little corner to be able to camp. We have dinner and quickly go to bed as we're tired from the short night we had last night and a long day out and about. We're so excited this morning. We are on the Yukon Quest Trail. After going over the Southern Lakes using the White Pass Railroad, and we are now on the Dawson Overland Trail, which is also the Yukon Quest Trail. You may have seen us yesterday on the Takini River. That was really exciting. And now we are on our way to Braeburn. So you'll see in our videos, maybe, there's these signs here made by the Yukon Quest. They also use sticks that are in the ground with the black and orange paint on them. Hey, I'm a king. <laughs> yeah. My own carros. <laughs> right, Scooby, you're the king. No more motion for Scooby. No motion no. at all, never actually. No. I just heard a weird sound. I looked around and the trailer is broken. The welding came apart. Time for some more bush fixing. The tobog and the hitch broke. Typical. The trail that, is very bumpy. That toboggan is like 20 years old and you've seen a lot of a lot my edge. We changed that already once, I'm pretty sure. Those trails are those trails near the the white horse are always like that. People have a few days of breakage. Yep. So what are we going to do to hold it together? String, I mean, ropes are actually, it's actually better. Mm -hmm. So we fixed my broken toboggan with some string. Hopefully it holds. The trail is very bumpy. It gets used a lot. So we'll be going slow. We've been trying to do 100 kilometers a day the past days. Today we're most likely not going to make that because it is quite slow going and we don't want to have to fix stuff all the time. But yeah, Here. with some rope, <laughs> been able to put it back together.
<laughs> Dooley's lookout. So I we are on the Dawson Overland Trail, also the Trans Canada Trail and the Yukon Quest route. The view is beautiful. There's two handsome men, a nice lake and a mountain view. <laughs> In 2008, when Philippe and I were here on snowshoes, on this section, we were followed by a pack of curious wolves that were howling around us all day. It was quite eerie, and it was for me the first such experience, but one I'll never forget for sure. And we were happy to find the Trans Canada Trail cabin back then, which now is still here. I am pretty sure, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, maybe it's just the same one, but further away. The, yeah. the, 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 the same one, but... Oh yeah, this is where we slept. <laughs> wow, the same landscape as well. Yeah. I think there was just a, there was, I'm not sure there was a stove. Uh, no, there was a stove, but no blocking. Yeah, for the, yeah, that's right, because you were wondering how it would be for mosquitoes. <laughs> After a quick visit to the cabin and down memory lane, on we go. We set up camp, we made it past Brayburn. We were planning and hoping to gas up in Brayburn for our next part of the trip. But we walked in there and the guy says he has no gas, which kind of really sucks. Uh, so we went on, we have to set up camp because we need to make a plan B, see how far it is to CarMax. And then just when we went to see how much gas we have left, figured out that on those super bumpy trails today, one of the gas cans broke. So we have a toboggan full of gas. Um, so we need to reassess and see what we can do. Yeah, so that night uh, we camp. Uh, we camped uh, a few kilometers east of um, the Brayburn, where we had the bad news that there was no gas there, which is uh, was very unfortunate. And we camped. And we had to think of uh, a plan yeah. uh, to do because uh, the four stroke machines are kind of new to us, and uh, we still have in mind that you know, two strokes machine were gas guzzling. And then we always carry way more gas than we need just in case of different situations. We always apply the one third rule, so one th we need to transport one third of the gas for to go to destination. One third of the gas in for uh, to come back in case of trouble, you can't make it, and one third of gas for other troubles. <laughs> is it the one third? No, I think the one third rule is something else. But anyway, <laughs> we that's have, our one third rule. <laughs> yeah, we always carry more gas, so even with the four strokes, of course. So we had to recalculate uh, that night there if we could make it to CarMax, the next uh, uh, destination and gas station if we could make it with the, with the gas we had. So we have two four-stroke machine, one two-stroke machine, uh, just in one. And we calculated that it would be just fine if the trail condition were uh, right. So with that, we decided to, to keep on going, uh, just, just with the gas we had. Uh, so there was a little bit of a risk taking there, knowing that uh, if one of us ran out of gas, 
uh, we can always 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 jump on an Alejandro's machine that's a really a gas seeper and you know, make it back to safety if we have to. Mm -hmm. The question was, can all the machine go there? We should be fine if the trailer is right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and we were about to head into some serious back country where any recovery would be very expensive and would take a long time. So we calculate indeed that we should be able to make it. But then the next day we run into bad trails condition. Yeah. Which be the, the bad one such as overflow. overflow. Oh my my face is really puffy. <laughs> Good morning. It's Good minus morning. 31 outside. They said it was going to warm up. It didn't it's, yet. It is warming up. Yeah. It is warming up. It's minus 30 now. Oh. Yeah. Well, again. Yeah. It's fine. It's winter after all. We brought all the right gear for it. And in the tent, it's toasty as always. So it's day four. four. This is day four. Yeah. We um, way north of White House now, and yesterday was a it was an easy trail, but uh, so it's pretty rough. Uh, yeah. So we, we had, we had a, a one toboggan broke. That's right. The hitch anyway, so we had to fix it with ropes and stuff. Yeah. And it's not very surprising. Uh, it was rough, but now also we passed Brayburn, which is uh, north of White House, and so by the trail is. 160 kilometers, I guess, mm -hmm. total from uh, White House to Brayburn. Yeah, on the trail. Yeah. And then uh, now we pass that, we cross the Plandak Highway yesterday evening. Yeah. And now we have a few kilometers in uh, a new tra the, another trail. No, we're not on the Overland, Dawson Overland Trail anymore. We're doing no. another trail. Yeah. And, uh, so far, uh, so it's still the Yukon Quest Trail. Yeah. But uh, there is a bit of uh, soft snow on top of the trail. I think it's gonna be a lot better. So a bit of uh, trail breaking, not really trail breaking, but trail re-breaking. But it's gonna be softer, be more comfortable, and who knows, maybe a bit faster. Because yesterday the trail was so rough because north of White House, a lot of people go um, snowmobiling for the weekend or whatever reason, or bison hunting. So the trail is, is used a lot, though we haven't seen too many people. And there's a lot of bumps on the trail. So you can't go fast, it breaks everything. But anyway, it's done. We did uh, 100 kilometers of bumps, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true that. And uh, now I think it's over. We're on a trail that's uh, much less used and, and with uh, fresh snow on top. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking forward to today. From what I remember, it were, there was lots of beautiful lakes. Yeah. And we're going to come by a cabin on Mandana Lake that we stayed in 15 years ago. And Philippe stayed in there 22 years ago also. So after not finding our 24, 24 years ago, after not finding our log riding in the um, Trans Canada Trail cabin today, yesterday I mean, I hope today we can maybe find something in the Madonna Lake cabin if it's still standing. Who knows? Anyway, time to have some breakfast because we try to hit the road, <laughs> hit the trail by ten o'clock. So it's good to be efficient in the morning. Putting some shoe glue, uh, fixing that, that uh, jug of two stroke oil kind of broke yesterday you know, on that crazy trail. So, uh, try to find a way to fix it. It's not a big hole, you can always transport it like upside down, but still. I'm sure if the shoe glue works, and a bit of piece of tape. Brought up Yukon Quest stick for memory on this trip. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. Where are you going to put it? Uh -huh. In your bedroom? Here for now. Yeah, but at home? When we get home, where are you going to put it? Probably in my bedroom, yeah. Yeah, good idea. <laughs> You're doing such a good job, honey. Thank you. I'm proud of you, as always. Between Brayburn and Carmax, the route follows multiple chains of lakes. The first lakes in the morning are in great condition, but we quickly encounter nightmarish conditions, overflow.
The trail is a fun combination of lake and forest. We can tell there is a lot more snow here than what we've seen so far. Opening the track again, and we still see the Yukon Quest markers, but it's, it's snowed quite a bit on the track now. So, how was it right this morning, Justin? It was beautiful, very nice mix of lake and trail and trees. Very pretty. Roll the track for all of us. Shit. Didn't make it. Didn't make it. Overflow is the water that pools up over the ice that's been pushed down by the weight of snow. While it's no risk as it means there's thick ice underneath, it's very annoying as the snowmobiles cannot get past it, especially pulling a load. It makes a heavy fro frozen slush that gets stuck on all the snowmobiles and the toboggans. And also, while sloshing around in it while getting machines and toboggans unstuck, you get wet. That's some overflow there. Okay, how can... Uh, what's... Okay. Yeah. I'll see how it goes. Okay. Eventually, I'm gonna connect that from to the trailer there so I can pull from somewhere better. Okay. Not from here. No. I tried to make a track, you know, like a dry track. Yeah. So you throw me the rope, right? Yeah. Okay, so when you get a grass up. Yeah, I don't know where I'm gonna be. No. <laughs> so you can throw the rope here, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Wherever it's dry. Okay. Yeah. Should I give you a pool? We got a section with big overflow. I think it's the whole lake. <laughs> well, the trail goes right by some open water there, and I think there's just overflow from that. Mm -hmm. 
safe path or anything, Dad? Yeah, the track is there. But I'm um, a bit short of rope to be off the overflow. and unhooking the Scooby Mobile from the toboggan, Philippe tries to make a track on the dry so he can pull the toboggans using the ropes we have. Justin and I shovel around the toboggan to create a path and to, and to break the suction. We are happy when we can start to wiggle the toboggan as this means it should move forward when Philippe pulls. Okay, Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. Go, 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 go. You good? Yeah. Sure? Yeah. <laughs> it just went over my leg. <laughs> One pull moves it forward a bit. It takes us two hours before we finally have all the machines on the other side. Philippe broke a trail on the shoreline of the lake where Justin and I were able to take our snowmobiles to the other side without getting stuck. We then remove all the slush from the tunnel of Philippe's snowmobile and we'll move on. But it's not long until... Well, we've barely gone 100 meters <laughs> and hit the overflow again. This time it's me in the front, so I'm going to shovel. Uh, sometimes it's just you know uh, out of luck, just a patch here and there. But we discovered that the lake were entirely flooded. Yeah. <clears throat> Which will sometimes require us that uh, let's say uh, someone in the evening go do the track. No, no loads, just a snow machine, and you know, my, my snow machine is very capable to do that. Just go empty, go through the flooded lake in the evening. Uh, flooded lakes in the evening, come back to camp and then the next day your truck is frozen and it's so easy for everybody. But of course, because of the, we had, uh, we had uh, something like 30 kilometers of lakes uh, left, of flooded lakes, and impossible for me to go 30 kilometers uh, one way, 30 kilometers back and the next day going again, which is really like a lot more distance. We couldn't do that technique. So Yeah, because we had not enough gas. Because we're not enough gas. And it's a very tiring technique too, because instead of sleeping, I need to do that, right? So yeah. <laughs> after a long day, so and it's not very safe because I'm alone by myself. So we couldn't do that. Find out about how we finished dealing with this overflow and all the other crazy things that are going to come our way next week in the second part of this documentary. 
If you haven't already done so, please subscribe so you won't miss out. And thank you for following along on this crazy adventure. That was pretty hard. <laughs>